Welcome back. This is Patrice for Panasonic Life at IFA 2012. Our segment right now is going to be about future craft and the era. Future craft, a design philosophy. Therefore, I need as experts some designers in form of Matsumoto-san and also Roda-san. Hello. Welcome back. And when it comes to the era, of course, then I need my expert, Mr. Billing. Matthew. Patrice, how are you? Well, it's good. It's kind of interesting to be in between you guys. I mean, you know, you have all the knowledge for the technology that is inside of a TV set. Yeah. Those people know what it takes just to make it look good. Absolutely. As it does here in, in the back. But perhaps we should start again just to describe this philosophy called Futurecraft. So, Rosa-san, please be so kind and tell us something about it. Basically, the design philosophy for all Panasonic products. And future, the word future comes from uh, creating better future through design and innovation. The word craft is about everything is being made with integrity and a spirit of craftsmanship. And we have four uh, key words, which are aspiration, craftsmanship, human focus, and being one with the earth. Um, so it's, in simple terms, it's about putting people and the environment first when we're designing new products. Okay, then thank you for that information. So that means this television set behind us, that this is also part of the Future Craft movement. So, but, but other than that, what's the concept behind uh, such a product as this? Oh. This TV, which I consider, it's okay, it's beautiful, it's oh, nice, it's... Oh yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just complaining because, of course, my television is like four years old and uh, this one looks, let's put it that way, quite sophisticated <laughs> in comparison to mine, but... <laughs> Good you. work. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you very much. So, the design concept is a glass animator. So, whereas design expresses uh, elegance by simplicity, it meets the aspiration of our consumers by harmonizing material and design. The glass animator uh, underlines the outmatching performance of display. Harmonizing. See, um, well, yeah, there's. That would be harmony if I finally would get my VT50. Then there would be a lot of harmony. And how environmentally uh, mm. friendly are the products, uh -huh. cons uh, considering there's the, the concept of the future craft? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The glass and metal designs I've mentioned is not just, just about uh, being an uh, aspirational concept. Uh, so you can see this one. So the, we are using the uh, real authentic material. And that is uh, so highly recyclable, and also mm, they have a uh, so long life span. See, a long life span. That's just, so it means I'm going to wait far longer until I'm going to change my VT20 to a new television. Done. So this is an international design. This is the design that you will find all over the world. But when it comes to design specifically for the European market, where is this? Uh, uh, where, where do you design your products for the European market? We actually have a design center in Europe. We research and analyze into European cultures, uh, design trends, styles, uh, looking into different user needs. So it's in order to create a global design. So it's all about, um, it's a bit of a collaboration between European designers and Japan. Once again, I just want to check again. That's okay, even, I even like the side. I even like the setup that this TV set. But I think it's going to be time also like for a little Q&A when we have um, our questions here on this uh, tablet PC, considering Futurecraft Oviera. I have the experts around me. All it takes right now is a tablet that actually works with a network. Do you have a functional network here? Nothing of that? Oh, no. Oh. No, we do have three of them? They're reproducing <laughs> back then. Um, IDM would like to know, can I use Viera Connect with my normal... Oh, this is a question for you then. Um, can I use Viera Connect with my normal TV or do I need a smart TV? Uh, well, that's a question we've had before, isn't it, Patrice? Right. And, uh, yeah, Viera Connect will work on the smart TV, as we already know. But if you've got an older television, whether that be Viera or any other manufacturer, then you, of course, can add a Blu-ray player, home theater kit, Blu-ray recorder uh, from the latest generation, and that will give you the functionality of Viera Connect as well. Okay. Coming to the next question. Do you use also Viera Connect by any chance? Uh, yes, he, do, he does. What's what, your favorite what app? Is your, yeah, what is your favorite app uh, on Viera? Uh, <laughs> it's going to be Twitter. 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 Yeah, anything. Yeah, anything for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, but we also have to talk into the microphone so that we can hear you. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anything I <I'll> have. <laughs> What about you? What's your favorite app? 
swiping, swiping action, you know? That you swiping can, chair? Yeah, very good. Well, yeah. We like swiping chair, don't we, Patrice? Yes, I do love a swiping chair. Um, again, it really seems to be like a very tricky area here because the network just crashed down again. Out of the three, let me get a new one. Oh, what, what, this way, that way. Old school. Herr Lippert, apparently he's German. Do thinner frames also mean more energy efficient? Energy efficient. Like a thinner frame? Thinner frame? Thinner frame is power. Energy efficient. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, they do. Yeah, I think so. So less material is uh, environmental, uh, environmental design. Yeah, yeah. So it's good for the environment, uh, yeah, but it's not so. energy efficient. Not it's not more no, energy efficient. No, no. Yeah, because it has nothing to do with the power consumption in general. Yeah, yeah. and less plastic. So using so real metal, authentic material. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So when it comes to energy efficiency, uh, it doesn't really change the thing. But of course, just by using less material, this is definitely more environmentally friendly. Um, coming to a question from Lud Miller. I really come, feel like really being in between, like a pin, pinball pin here. Lud Miller would like to know, what is the best way to lower power consumption on my TV? So apparently she already has one. What should she do in order just to uh, consume less energy on the televisions there, except like not watching at all? Okay, well there is actually an eco mode on the television that you can select, and that will uh, that will maximise the power, the efficiency of the TV at all times. Um, but then also there's subtle differences that you can make to the television. You know, if you watch it in uh, the brightest conditions mm -hmm. and you have the, the the most brightest picture set that way then it's going to use a little bit more energy. But if you use the, uh, the cinema modes or the film modes, it's going to lower the brightness and the color, therefore lowering the power consumption overall. But you know, really, there's little overall you can do apart from those few things. Or if you're away for a, f uh, if you're away a little bit yeah. longer, you yeah. can also like, shut it down completely. Yeah, don't put it in standby and, and just make sure you switch it off, that kind of thing, and yes. Those kind of things should be uh, sufficient. Thank you for your question, Lou Miller. Uh, coming to Tanya B, uh, can I switch, not swipe, but can I switch the TV off, or is it always on standby? Uh, well, the, you can switch it into standby, obviously, using the remote control. You've got the little red button on the top left-hand corner. Uh, but then also on the back, on the right, you'll find the on and off button, which will shut the TV down um, entirely. So you don't, you don't get that standby light. Well, I, I didn't really have to check like, the on and off button on this one. Oh, I see. There you go. These are, in comparison to my television, to the VT20, this button is like an eighth of the button actually on my TV. Yeah. Mine is like really thick, like a thumb. It's like really thick. This one is like tiny. Well, Patrice, you could do a, a demonstration actually. That TV is in standby. You can see the little red light on the side. Yes. On the front, sorry. So if you go and switch it off on the side, you will see the red light's gone out because it's now shut down entirely. Yeah, so it was in standby, but now it's off. So the answer to the question is, you have an on and off button. So yes, uh, Tanya B, uh, you can, um, of course, turn it completely off. Uh, Wolfgang would like, to have, uh, would like to know, if the design of the TV is so slim, will a USB slot still fit in the side? Uh, 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 uh. Does it come with uh, USB? Yeah. Microphone? Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. I sure. think uh, this one has sure, yeah. uh, three and sure, also sure. four HDMI. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a good job. It yeah. worked. Thank you. <laughs> so that would probably be a great time to bring up what the USBs can be used for. So the obvious one would be USB sticks if you've got uh, photos or music on there, yeah. Uh, another one would be external hard drives. With the top of the range televisions, you can actually have a USB hard drive to record right. two, yeah. Uh, and then the other reason you might use it is a Skype cam, for example. Um, this, this is an interesting question, but I'm really surprised how this is going to uh, be possible just to turn around because Basti would like to know, will my old smart TV camera still look good with the new design? Uh, beyond about the Skype camera, imagine. Yeah, it sits on the top and it just, uh, it's gonna, it's going to do the job. It had been changed anyway. Um, Lucia would like to know, how do you get such good images and sound in such a thin casing? Uh -huh. Yeah, the sound and images. How is it possible to put it in such a thin uh, casing? Uh, thin casing. So, um, 
How is that possible? How you manage that? Yeah, so I think so. This is not only so out there design. So so we uh, when we create a design, so we study the in the, uh, inside so of the mechanical design as well. That's why so thanks to the mechanical uh, technology to make it slimmer, uh, better, or something like that, so we can achieve a very slim uh, tennis uh, design. Yeah. Okay. So it's also thanks to the mechanics, to the engineers who have been uh, actually providing already in the first place uh, a TV which doesn't really take that much space. And then it was his job just to have the perfect casing around it, and that's why this TV is that thin. But you just mentioned we, you just want to do some Skyping because we talked about the USB. Well, first of all, I'd like to know what comes first. Does the design come first and then the engineer's mechanic around it? No, apparently it's the other way around. It's first is the mechanics and then it's the design? Uh, yeah. Or is it first the design and then the mechanics? Yeah, ma'am. Inside and out. Yeah, both, both, both. So the, how do you say, the product-wise, so starting the mechanical design. Yeah, mechanical means the structure design. Yeah. Yeah, to make it slimmer, better, for yes. example. But uh, on the other hand, so we have to create a very beautiful and sophisticated design. So we should study, the, so for example, the life, uh, consumer's lifestyle and uh, getting a uh, so great trend. So the, we need to both, yeah, both point of view, so yeah, to ach- approach. Does it, ha- does it happen from time to time that you have strong arguments just about these kind of issues? Is it possible that the mechanic department says, no, 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 it has to be thicker? And you're like, Sometimes. no, 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 it has <laughs> to be thinner. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes? Yeah, yeah. And who won? Yeah, mm-hmm. I cannot <laughs> say. <laughs> I cannot say. <laughs> but uh, so we have a strong confidence so based on the future craft and glass and metal design. So, yeah, we can do it. So it happens in every family. <laughs> Sometimes some fights, but... Apparently, we, we will never know who actually um, is uh, dominant in those kind of dis- uh, discussions. Um, you were just about to ask something, or are you just going to no, ask no, the I'm next good. one? No, I thought that was a great answer. Okay, then thank you, Lucia, for this uh, last question of yours. Coming to a question by a guest. Is the Skype camera also in the same design as the new TVs? I think so. Ah. That's been a modification. We, we could share that question. Yeah. I think you could, yeah. Um, did actually the, the Skype camera also came in the same design as the TV? Uh, yeah, Did you yeah, also yeah, design yeah. the camera? Uh, then? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we are also designing so Skype camera as well. So matching into the f- so very beautiful and sophisticated frame. Yeah, yeah, I can do it. Yeah. Don't we have the, the Skype camera? Yeah, actually we can see it? Yeah, just 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 follow us. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you around here. At the uh, yeah. Rosa, you you stay here. Okay, Rosa's leaving us. <laughs> Bye, Rosa. <laughs> Bye, Rosa. Mm-hmm. Ah, here we are. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the Skype cam. Um, you can see it there on the television, indicated that it's actually on and running. And here you can see you are sending this video. Okay? So that's the video that's going out. But you can do this at the same time while you're actually watching television. So um, it's, it's technically possible now to... Uh, Patrice, you live in Berlin. As a matter of fact, I do. I live in the Midlands in England. I could call you while we're watching... Uh, an Olympic game, say the 100 meters final or 200 meters final, I could Skype you, I could see you, chat to you while we watch the same thing at the same time on the television. And we could, you know, get, do that all the way through with the ability of Skype. When it comes to the Olympic games, yeah, that makes sense, but a regular television program is going to be a little bit more difficult. Then. Well, whenever David Hasselhoff's best top 10 come on, you know, then we could share that experience. Then too. we have to share that. But as you really can see, like, this is really, this is really beautiful adding uh, to, the, uh, to the frame itself. And it's really light. It's about half the weight of a, a crushed-up Dundee cake. <laughs> Not bad. Good work, once yeah. again. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the, the last question, continuing with the next one coming uh, from Future Girl. Are plasma TVs thinner uh, than LCD or LED TVs? Is plasma th- uh, are plasma TVs generally thinner than the LED TVs? LED is LED is thinner than p- uh, plasma TV. So at the moment. At the moment. At the moment. Is it about to change? Yeah. Uh, we don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not, okay, we're not sure. But as a matter of fact, yes. Uh, LED is thinner than plasma, not the other way around. Thank you, future girl, for that question. I didn't know that. I always thought it was almost the same. Uh, no, no, recent t- technology advances with LED mean that it's, it's a much slimmer design, isn't it, LED, than plasma? Yeah. Um, but, you know, let's not beat around the bush. We're still talking about that kind of thickness, you know. It's still very thin, even for plasma. So you're only talking a very small distance. It's not like 
one was that deep and one was that deep. It's just a, a small difference, isn't it? But that's why we're human beings. Sometimes nothing has to make any sense, but just no. well, for arguable go. reasons. Yeah. This question was t definitely correct, because I would have never thought of the fact that plasma is thicker than uh, LED. Um, a question by a guest, considering like Viera Connect, can I design my own app for Viera Connect? Yes, yes, you can. Yep. Do you know the answer? Do you want me to remind you? Uh, there are two different kind of kits that you can buy. One is the, for the... Uh, One's like an entry-level kit. Entry-level so kit, around yeah. like 170 something like yeah, that. Yeah, about 170 euros, something like that. Euros. And you can just get used to uh, the idea of designing an app See if you like it, and uh, if it's you know if you're proud of what you want to do and you've achieved what you want to achieve, you can right. send that through for quality control. But if you're a more professional organisation, maybe a games company that wants to put a game onto the VR Connect market, for example, uh, you can buy the the, the better kit um, that just gives you a few more options. Uh, you get much more support. I think it's 24-hour hotline support, and there's a few other bits and bobs as well. Um, but that's about 600 euros. Uh, but either one, whichever one you do, goes through the QC, the quality control, and provided it passes all that for security, quality, make sure there's no malware in there, make sure um, it's, it's you know proper, uh, then that will pass and you can buy it through the Vieira Connect market. So the answer will be yes, under these circumstances just uh, mentioned by Matthew. Thank you for that question. Coming to the next one, uh, by uh, also a guest. How does the Viera TV connect to the internet? Is it wireless? Uh, well, there's, there's several ways to connect the Viera TV to the internet. Um, you can do it through the wireless LAN, so you can have a hard wire back to your router. Yep. You can do it through something called Home Plug, which uses the uh, electrical system in your property to share uh, the internet from your router to your television. And then the most common one is on the top of the range TVs, you get built-in wireless, so the ET50. Um, has built-in wireless uh, like VT5, GT50, VT50. But would so you know how forth. big that device is that helps a TV to become wireless? Would you know how big it is? Well, the actual wireless device, yeah. um, which is included in the top of the range VT50. Yeah, well, in actual fact, if you, I think it's this side somewhere, you'll find no like a wireless. Okay. Would you know what the wireless device is in a VT50? Where would that it's be? About that big. That's it. Yeah. It's, it's really quite small. But it could be, be put anywhere. It could also be... No? It could be, yeah. I mean, it, it all depends on the design, doesn't it, of the electronics as to where they were placed. Approximately, what, what would be uh, like this device? Do you have an idea where it is? Uh, yeah. yeah. Maybe. It's about there. What's about the sun? Don't forget the, the microphone. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you would know where it is. I think every model is different. So ah, if you okay, look at the right. E5, the ET5, for example, they are approximately there. Um, and I'm not entirely sure of the rest of the range, but I know that that's roughly where they're located. I mean, I know that the televisions have so many different functions. Yeah. Is that also something that you were aware when you've been doing like a general design? I mean, they pretty much have all this the same look, but, ti but there are the slight differences. Yeah. Tell us something about the difference. Now I learned the LEDs are thinner than the plasmas. Mm. Is there anything else, yeah. like some secrets that you might uh, yeah. share with us? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're creating, so based on the glass anemeters, uh, as I mentioned, but uh, so we are focusing on the narrow bezel for LED models and the plasma, so we can, we can have uh, so one sheet of glass concept to emphasize uh, High picture quality mm -hmm. to enjoy the so cinema or something like that. Yeah, so this is a difference in between PDP and the LCD. Yeah. See, I'm learning more and more. I become a technician even after this segment here. Right. So thank you for this question. Coming to the next one, Tommy Sweeney would like to know what do you think will be the next major innovation for TV? That's a question for the two of us. From the out, how does the t how do you think the television will look like in let's say ten years? What do you think is a television going to offer in about ten years? Okay, mm. want to go first? Maybe yeah. So product design wise, I think uh, maybe this innovation innovation should be so as I mentioned. So we have to create the. How do you say mechanic, mechanical design as well? Yeah. So to achieve that, so very beautiful and sophisticated design. But this is one of innovation. Yeah, yeah. Then so in the future, so this should be matching into the uh, space uh, in the, our customers. Yeah, that's why. So we need to we need to so 
uh, we need to learn the so European lifestyle as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think technology-wise, we've actually got an array here at the show at IFA 2012, where we're actually displaying some of the future technologies. We've got a glassless-free 3D TV for customers to have a look at. We've got the uh, 4K resolution 20-inch uh, television. 4K, that's nothing. Yeah, well, it's... Uh, Compared uh, to the AK that we, we, you were just about to mention. Yeah, I was going to that. Yeah, we've got the AK, 145-inch plasma. Um, I mean, do you ever envisage people having 145-inch plasmas in their home? Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Do you have friends? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you think this, that's a reality? That yeah. One day that will become a reality? Yeah, I so, think so, yeah. And that's with the 16 times resolution of the current full HD TVs that we have today. Um, but that's not for some time, is it? We're thinking about 2020, so, you know, talking eight years away there. And in between that, we've got uh, other exciting projects that we're working on, like um, uh, OLED is a project that we're looking at for the future, isn't it? Uh, we've just joined forces with another company, which should set us apart from everybody mm -hmm. else, shouldn't it? Yeah. And we should have some groundbreaking products come in there. We've got uh, 3D already here, but, you know, we still advances to maybe with 3D as well. Um, the current technology, you know, plasma is every year, plasma seems to take another step forward. I mean, you take your VT20 and compare it with the VT50, and there's a distinct difference from one to the other in just a short couple of years. So, it, no doubt, you know, in a couple of years' time, we could be stood here, you're complaining about your VT50 that's a few years old, we're looking at the VT80, and it's putting your VT50 to shame, you know? It's, it's that kind of uh, constant evolvement, isn't it, of uh, technology? Are you absolutely right. I'm just really looking forward. We should do the same thing again by next year. Get me a VT50 and then see if I'm going to complain next year. <laughs> right, let's, okay. let's, let's give it a try. Panasonic, I challenge you to give me the VT50, uh, 65. 65 is the biggest size you can get, like 65 inch? Uh, yes. 65 inch. And then by next year, I see if I still find it uh, convincingly beautiful. No, I, I'm, well, I'm sure you will. No, no, come on, don't give it up. Just give them a chance just to get the TV <laughs> finally. Okay, so uh, Tommy Sweeney, thank you for your uh, question. Coming to the next one by RNX. Uh, what, are the design, what are the design influences? Do you have uh, uh, your design influences? Inspiration. Inspirations? Inspiration. Where I came from means... No, but your, your inspiration. Do you have inspiration? inspiration? My inspiration is... So... Maybe this is based on the lifestyle. So I, I have visited a lot of so people's houses, and I got, got so some issue. So then, so we solved that, that kind of issue. Then, so then after that, so we create a so very nice design. So user friendly, user friendly design. Yeah. But okay, user friendly design. But is there something that you loved as a child that you like, oh, one day I, when I be grown up, yeah. I become an architect, and then I'm going to do the same things yeah, that yeah. Insp insp been an inspiration to uh, myself, so yeah. to you. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so what is your inspiration? What is, the, uh, what is your source of ideas? Source of ideas? Mm. Well, basically, well, one is I mentioned so from a lifestyle, and another one is, well, I... I always looking for so everything. So yeah, for example, so from museum and uh, from city and from other products or, or, or um, my vehicle or something like that. So we can get a lot of information from and idea from everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm considering design so in 24 hours. Yeah. Okay. So it could be pretty much everything. Uh, so uh, thank you for that question, RNX. Uh, we shall continue with the next one. Coming from Future Boy. It's all about the future here. It's all about the, the future. That segment. How would the design evolve in the future? We pretty much uh, mentioned that um, yeah. earlier. It's a matter of, first of all, which is going to be the development on the mechanical side, and then we have to see what's going to be afterwards on the outside. Yep. Future Boy, thank you for that uh, question. Coming to the next one by Xilef2. Uh, it's a hot topic. What about uh, accessories? I mean, Accessories for Viera. For Viera, we just mentioned it earlier. In yeah, a, well, earlier obviously, the, the key one that we have here is the Skype cam, isn't it? Um, so that we can do the Skyping, obviously. The, the other accessories available through the Viera Connect platform are keyboards, uh, games controllers, uh, 3D glasses, wireless dongles, um, and yes, yeah, that's, you know, they're the accessories, really. Is there any accessory that you would like to design as well right now? Right now, accessories. What do you think of? 
this kind of, this kind of camera and also accessories, yeah, remote controller and also the, for example, the kind of mechanical of the hanging, wall hanging elements or something like that. Oh, you did that yeah, too? Yeah, 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 yeah. But is there anything else you would yeah. like to do that you would yeah. like to continue to yeah. do? Yeah, My yeah. Anything so I'd like to do. You don't, you don't <laughs> care. <It's> like, <laughs> I don't care. You, okay. <laughs> So on, on the advent of accessories then, um, would you one day would you want to design that into the TV or would you prefer that it was outside the TV? Uh, depends, depends. So if we put if we put the camera inside of the bezel, so this be bezel should be wider. So yeah. which is more important for the consumer? So consumer maybe uh, needs the so very slimmer looking of bezel. Mm. I think, yeah, it depends. It depends. Yeah. It's a, well, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a good point. I mean, on one hand, you're just happy that the, the frame, the casing itself, just became, like, thinner. Yeah. yeah. Inclu but including, like, a camera would, could cause it to become yeah. even thicker. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, uh, coming from a design point of view, you want to keep the, the bezel slimmer mm. because the TV looks prettier. Yeah. Uh, and what we've said before on these uh, sessions is that one of the reasons that we offer an external camera is because we can offer a higher spec camera you're not paying for it when you're buying the television. You pay for it separately. If you want it, you buy it type thing, and not every customer is paying for it. Plus, we get four HDMI's as opposed to using one up for an inbuilt camera. True. Sorry, not True. HDMI's. Three USBs uh, to be used, one for the camera rather than... Yeah, that, that also makes sense. Uh, in between, again, we have a poll. Uh, once again, we would like to have uh, just to know something about your tendencies. As this time around, we wanted to know my smart... TV's position in my living room is? Where do you put in, uh, your television in general? Is it hung up on the wall? Is it freestanding on a sideboard? Or is it hung from the ceiling? Hung from the ceiling, it's rather rare. I would go rare. for hung up on the wall. But then again, freestanding on a sideboard, that's the easiest. Uh -huh. It's the easiest. But it, you've got the choice, haven't you? Yeah. 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 It's not a matter of choice because I'm very not capable of... Uh, yeah actually putting a television on the no, wall. No, but it, it is a choice, isn't it? If you go back 10 years when we were on CRT, you didn't really have a choice. I mean, you could get brackets, but only for the smaller TVs. Yeah. So, you know, your TV had to go on the suburb. Now, you can either have it on the stand, the side, or on the wall. Well, now that I've saw, like, the, the huge aquarium that we have uh, right there with all the TVs, I could imagine just, like, having the entire room just, like, uh, <laughs> made, made of, like, a TV a whole screens. video wall. Yeah, on the ceiling, on the wall, everything. Uh, so thank you for that uh, participation on that poll. We shall continue with the next question coming from Peter. I don't watch TV, but I love the Viera lineup. Um, the, li the Viera lineup. Could you please give me a reason to buy one? This is, this is your minute. <laughs> Under the two of you, why yeah. should he buy a Viera TV? I'd struggle to give you one reason, but I can give you several. You know, you've got, right. your, you've got your Viera Connect on there. Even if you don't watch TV, uh, you might have the... You want the ability to Skype your family and friends across the world. Uh, you can do your social networking on there. You can even surf the web on there, actually, through the Viera Connect platform. You can play games. Uh, if you've got a Blu-ray player, you could watch movies. If you've got um, music and movies stored on a hard drive somewhere, you could draw them through. You could connect it to a computer and, and use it as a monitor if you wanted to do. Um, there's so many reasons to buy a Viera, smart Viera television. And Matsumoto made it look good. Mm. Yeah. So you have one more reason just to get one of the Viera lineup. Yeah. But if you, if you want to wait for a time, I have a VT20 that I could sell to you, and then I will get the... Uh, I'm starting again talking about the VT50. Okay, I'm sorry. That would be just an option. But Peter, this has been uh, your answer. Um, let's see if this is convincing enough for you. Uh, Brenton Black would like to know, Plasma has the better picture quality, but could LED ever catch up? Well, Do you think? Is it going to be possible? You know, uh, that's, a, that's a jolly good question, I would say. I would never say never. That'd be my, that's always been my motto, never say never, because you never know what's around I mean, the two future. years ago, it, it, it was said that LED, the, the maximum size you can achieve is 42 inches. Now we are far beyond these 42 inches, so chances are that actually it could one day become better, or maybe both of them are going to get replaced by something new. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, I, I, exactly. But in the near future, you don't really see this happen, that uh, LED is going to get better than plasma? For, for this moment in time, plasma technology is uh, superior to the current crop of LEDs. Um, I, I, what I think will happen 
and I may be wrong, yeah. so don't quote me on this, I should say, um, LED will gradually morph into OLED. And OLED technology is still in its infancy, so there's a chance that that would then, you know, so to speak, take the baton and run. It would, that would be the one that gets developed. That okay. would be my guess. Okay, so hard to say uh, at this moment. Bram Black, thank you for your question. We come in uh, now to the next one by Florian Kohlmann. Since 2005, I have LCD TVs, and I got always, I got always tired in, uh, at, at watching. No problems with CRTs. Uh, is a neoplasma better? Oh, well, the answer is actually clearly yes. Is that in, believe it, it or is. not? Yeah, yeah. There was a German university a couple of years ago. They did an intensive research program on this, and what they found was that the more natural, uh, faster refresh time of a plasma made it far easier on the eye. Okay, um, so it, it didn't tire you out nowhere near as fast. Your eyes move less, therefore they wear out uh, not as quick. Uh, so you're not as tired, tired as quick. And uh, that's essentially what's going on there. Yeah. So it is yes, and it's been scientifically proven. Scientifically proven. I can't remember. I think it may be Munich U University, but I, I can't. can't uh, if remember. it's Munich, then I wouldn't be so sure about it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. We love Munich here. We Berliners love Munich. I uh, no doubt about that. So Florian, uh, thank you for your question, and this was your answer. Continuing with a question coming from a Uni Zoom, do I need a dark background for a better picture? Is uh -huh. the background uh, important? Well, you, you've only got to look at a cinema, really, haven't you? Yeah, Cinema's yeah, always cinema, in the dark, yeah. you know. Um, if you look at the picture quality experience, like the cinema experience, we've got dark walls there as well. Uh, so the truth is, yeah, a darker room because there's less distraction, and again, it's easier on the eye. You know, L less light is easier to you know focus on the actual television screen. So yes, you do need a uh, dark background for a better picture. This is your answer, Uni. Thank you for your question. Um, the next question is about how future-proof is Viera Connect. Uh, well, if Yara Connect is uh, always a constantly ongoing improvement all the, all the time. So um, it's as future-proof as anything, really, that's out there. You've got very simple technology, well, not simple technology, but good technology built into the televisions. But each year, as we've discussed before, the technology of the televisions will improve. And as that improves, then the Yara Connect will improve with it. It's a, it's a you know, whole chain of events that's a constant evolution of uh, the feature. So... Is it future proof or not? We, we can't tell. It's just that it's uh, permanently yeah, it's, it's, developing. So yeah, you're constantly developing it, and yeah. you're always updating. As you know, even yours, which is how many years old? Your VT20. Two years. Two, three years old. Two, three and years. Even that gets uh, updated, doesn't it? So to a degree, yes, it's future proof. So yes, it is. Thank you for this question. Coming to the next one, coming from Panda. How long do you provide software updates for your TVs? If I buy one, would it become obsolete in a few years? Uh, no, I think there's a, an EU directive that means that we have to constantly update for at least 10 years. At least 10 years. If necessary, uh, then again, if necessary. If necessary, yeah. I mean, there's only so much you'd need to change on a TV, so yeah. Right. But, uh, well, for the next 10 years, the chances are that you also will have the chance just to enjoy your television for that time, for that period then. If you're not like me and want to get like the latest model for the next year, including the VT50. Uh, do you do any stylish cabinets for your TVs? Ooh. Oh, one for you. Uh, cam stylish cabinet? Yeah, um, no, at the moment, no. So, but uh, in the future, so let me have a time to study. Ah, so you're thinking uh, so about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> hopefully. So uh, maybe one day we could have a whole design concept of yeah, cabinet yeah, TV yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. So we'll not exclusive, Patrice. <laughs> so, well, let me know early, so, you know, before I get my VT50 <laughs> by Panasonic, not that I get the wrong one, it's not going to fit into the designer yeah, yeah, cabinet. Yeah, yeah. So uh, not for now when it comes to the cabinets, uh, but... Hopefully in the future, you never know. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Coming up uh, to the next one, Alan Apart Rich would like to know, you have so many models. How do I work out which is the best for me? Well, you know, the best thing to do when it comes to these things is visit your local dealer and explain to your dealer what it is. I mean, they're trained to work out which one's the best model for you. Right. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, you go along with the things, you know, you, you're probably going to have a predetermined idea of uh, how big a TV you want. You, I imagine you at least know how big a size, a gap to, mm -hmm. to fill. So that would be a determining Also factor. depending, and when it comes to that gap, it's also important to know what 
uh, is going to be the, the, the source of yeah, choice. Yeah, the, the main source. Because it's a different thing if you watch ordinary television programs or a high definition, uh, high yes. resolution yep. program as uh, Blu-ray. The, the or room that's going to be, if it's in a conservatory, for example, we would always recommend an LCD or LED because the brighter screens can compensate for the brighter rooms. Mm -hmm. But if it's a darker room, like a living room, where you know it's normally a little bit darker and you're going to watch films, then a plasma would be the way to go. Yeah. If it's a, a TV that's going to be used as a, maybe as a computer monitor for kids' programs, then again, LED would be beneficial. Um, so, you know, there's many different reasons, but if you visit your local dealer, they should be able to help you out. That's what they're there for. Exactly. That's what they're there for. Uh, but prior to that, just think of, uh, first of all, you should think through what exactly is it that you want to do with the television, where yep. it's supposed to uh, be positioned then, and then afterwards talk to your dealer. And he definitely should be able just to help you out there. If not, Matthew, you should talk to the dealer then in, yeah. in the future. <laughs> yeah. Alan, thank you for your question and good luck. Um, have you received any awards? Have you received any awards for your design? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we, we've got uh, so IF Design Award or something like that, so, yeah. So, and also ISA, ISA Award as well, yeah. So something that you're very proud of, like, yeah, hey, sure, sure, sure. I do have awards. Sure. You can have, you can have your awards. I just want the television. <laughs> I just TV. want the TV. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't need awards. I just <laughs> need a VT50. That's, <laughs> all, that's all I need. All right, then, uh, yes, indeed, an ISA and an uh, IF award have been granted so far. Um, Robin would like to know, do I need an extra sound system with a Viera TV to get a proper surround sound effect? Well, there is a, actually a sound processor inside the TV um, that gives you a pseudo surround system from the speaker system that's built in. But if you want uh, the real McCoy, so to speak, the real top quality, then yeah, by all means, add a home theater kit and you can get a good 5.1 surround sound audio quality system, yeah. Okay. Well, indeed, if you really want to go for the real deal, then you should definitely uh, get an extra system for that sound. And uh, as we're going to come now to the last and final question for the segment, how long does it take you to develop? Okay, how long does it take you to develop a new design? New design. So, it depends. It depends. Maybe for a year to three years, or sometimes uh, it takes about uh, so five years. It depends on the, uh, my issue. Yeah. My, how, how, long did it how long did it take for that television? Maybe my, in two years. Maybe, two years? Yeah, in two years. My one year, my one to two years. Yeah. So uh, you're always constantly thinking, kind of two years ahead of what the TV is yeah, going to look yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I mentioned, so this is not only so out to des uh, outside design. So we have to co uh, consider with uh, inside mechanical yeah. design as well. Oh, okay. It takes about a long time, so for two years or something like that. Yeah. So is that early because yeah. you're not getting yeah. uh, making any progress yeah. because it's a yeah, team yeah, effort. Yeah. That, of course, needs also yeah, uh, some depends. consolation then. All right, then, uh, thank you for all your questions. That's, that's it for our segment, considering uh, Viera Connect. Um, don't forget, just in case that you are going to make it over here to Berlin, to the IFA, or if you have some friends who intend to come over here, tell them to go to our huge aquarium, like the huge Panasonic monument, and they should swipe and share. Why? Because it's for a good cause. It's for charity. Because per 1,000 swipe... Oops. Per thousand swipes, um, Panasonic will make a donation to the Aldebaran project, which will help school kids to educate school kids just uh, to make them understand about the diversity of the oceans. And so far, right now, we do have uh, 70,000 swipes, which is quite a lot, but it could be more. Yeah. So don't forget to mention that to your friends coming to the IFA. And uh, once again, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Matsumoto san. Thank you, thank you very much. Congratulations on the design once thank again. You. Thank you. Thank you, Matsumoto san. And also thank you to you, uh, Mr. Billing, for thank your you, expertise Patrice. when it comes to Vieira Connect. And we see each, uh, see each other again uh, at uh, 1700, uh, 5 o'clock, when it comes to home appliance and beauty care. Patrice Budibeda for Panasonic Live at IFA 2012. Thank you.